Discerning Hearts presents In Search of the Still Point with Dr. Regis Martin. In episode 62, Dr. Martin reflects on giving Christ his due. In these final days of Lent, as we find ourselves closing in on the awful ordeal of the Lord's Passion that begins next week, we see a number of striking intimations of what is to come set down in the Gospel of St. John, the disciple closest to the Lord, on whom so much of our understanding of these last days depends. In chapter 10, for instance, verses 31 to 42, which we read this Friday, a confrontation takes place between Jesus and certain Jews, eager to stone him. It is a chilling reminder of the fate awaiting the Messiah on the other side of Palm Sunday, when this, when the cry of Hosanna will be replaced by crucify. The scene described is the stuff of high drama, and on hearing the exchange we find ourselves eavesdropping on events that will surely end when the baying for blood reaches its climactic crescendo in the horror of crucifixion and death. But for now, there appears to be just enough room for Jesus to maneuver, time enough even to escape. Jesus will make very shrewd use of the interval, by the way, reminding his enemies that he has shown them an abundance of good works. For which of these, he asks, are you trying to stone me? A fair question, it would seem, to put to people for whom Christ has demonstrably done so much good already, not to mention the promise of eternal life, if only they would believe in him. And yet they persist in their perversity, doubling down, as they say, in wanting to kill him. Why is that? Because it is not for anything he's done that they desire his blood even if he had been as generous as Santa Claus in passing out presents, they would still be driven by the kind of blood lust that only death will slake. Forget the free stuff, they seem to be saying. We're not interested. What really incites them isn't anything he's done, but rather who he claims to be. It is not his good behavior they object to, but his being. We are not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy, they tell him. They tell him, you, a man, are making yourself God. In other words, by announcing himself as no less divine than God himself, the crowd will determine that he must die, that Jesus should dare to say, the Father is in me, and I am in the Father is simply insupportable for men whose attitude toward the living God will not abide anyone less than God, claiming an equality of importance to God. It is simply blasphemy, no greater crime than which can be imagined by a Jew of the first century, or any century for that matter, given Judaism's utter refusal even to speak God's name. So sacredly terrifying are the syllables of the absolute other. And so to arrogate to oneself attributes peculiar to God alone is intolerable. Is not Jesus, after all, one of us, a mere mortal for heaven's sake? Where does this upstart get off, ascribing divine attributes when it's obvious to everyone he's no more God than any other man. Off with his head. What a pity that in their rush to pick up stones, they hadn't bothered to canvas any of the other possibilities to account for the claim made by Christ. A shocking claim, to be sure, and if true, would amount to the final wonder of the world. For example, was his character such 
that dishonesty was a commonplace practice in his dealings with others, when he said, Before Abraham came to be, I am. Was this evidence that he was a liar, an absolute fraud, and a humbug? Or to put it more charitably, that he was a raving lunatic, who, having lost his reason, could easily have entertained delusions of divinity? If neither hypothesis will wash, then what's left? that Jesus is exactly who he claimed to be, namely, the Logos of God, and you and I are to bend the knee before him. Thanks for listening. This is Regis Martin in search of the still point. You've been listening to Dr. Regis Martin in search of the still point. For more episodes in this series, visit discerninghearts.com or you can find it in our free Discerning Hearts app or on many other streaming platforms. Discerning Hearts is a 501c3 nonprofit Catholic apostolate dedicated to evangelization and spiritual formation through the use of new media. To learn how you can support our mission, visit discerninghearts.com.